meeting to order. Uh, the first item that we have at uh, 7 p.m., we have three public hearings scheduled, local law number three, four, and five. We'll just go in sequence. We'll start with the local law number three. We have a notice of public hearing. Please take notice that the Town Board of Town of Cole will hold a public hearing on the ninth day of May 2016 at 7 o'clock p.m. at Town Hall. On May 3 Main Street, Paul New York, on proposed local law number three of the year 2016. Entitled Local Law to Amend Town Code Chapter 158, entitled Zone, to revise certain de definitions and the uses permitted in the Agricultural Rural Residence District and Mountain and Conservation Residence District. The purpose of local law is to amend Town Code Chapter 158, entitled Zoning, to revise the definitions of terms hotel, motel, mm -hmm. and bed and breakfast, and to eliminate earth operations as permitted use in the Agricultural Rural Residence District and the Mountain and Conservation Residence District. A copy of the proposed local law is on file in the Office of the Town Clerk and available for inspection by interested persons during Town Clerk's business hours. Town Board will, at the above date, time, and place, hear all persons interested in the subject matter hereof. Person may appear in person or by agent. All written communications addressed to the board must be received by the board at or prior to the public hearing by order of the town board, town of Cornwall, or not to the town clerk. Steve, I don't think we need any further explanation of what this is in terms of the. No, I, I think you covered it. The you definition of motel and motel, uh, as well as bed and breakfast, were changed. Um, hotels are now allowed in the HC and earth operations are now under this. Um, no longer permitted uses in the MCR and the AR. That's it. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go to the public hearing open. Anyone wishing to speak on local law number three? Hearing no one, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Okay, second. Sorry. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazza? Yes. And I just want to include in there that uh, the, the public hearing is closed. We will accept uh, the report from our planning board and also from uh, the county planning department uh, as those reports become available. Okay, next public hearing. Notice of public hearing. Please take notice of the town board of the town of Cornwall. We'll hold a public hearing on the ninth day of May 2016. 7 o'clock p.m. at Town Hall, 18 through Main Street, Cornwall, New York, and proposed local law number four of the year 2016, entitled the local law to amend town code. <coughs> Chapter 158, entitled zoning, to change the zoning designation of certain real property from suburban residence district two to highway commercial, and to change the zoning designation of other real property from suburban residence district two to planned commercial development. The purpose of this local law is to amend the town's zoning code to implement the provisions of the town's comprehensive plan by changing the zoning designation of certain real property from suburban residence district two to highway commercial and by changing the zoning designation of certain real property from suburban residence district two to planned commercial development. A copy of the proposed local law is on file in the office of the town clerk and available for inspection by interested persons during the town clerk's business hours. Town Board will at the above date, time, and place hear all persons interested in the subject matter hereof. Persons may appear in person or by agent. All written communications addressed to the board must be received by the board at or prior to the public hearing. By order of the Town Board, Town of Cornwall, or not the Town Clerk. Steve, you want to just give a brief overview of the Sure. Local okay. law? Um, this local law and the next local law that you're going to hold a public hearing on are the result of uh, further implementation of the comprehensive plan update of. In 2012, Gary? Yes. Okay. And uh, what the comprehensive plan said was that um, the town needed more rateables and needed to consider um, appropriate places to put commercial development. It further said that um, the town needs to consider the possibility uh, that large existing uses or large proposed uses, like, and specifically mentioned, because at the time they were having financial difficulties, and uh, Cornwall Commons, because that's for years uh, been uh, an issue with the property owner as to whether it should be developed as senior housing or not. Um, the town should start considering if those uses, which had kind of been anticipated to be what was going to be there going forward, weren't developed or no longer existed, what would be the appropriate zoning? Because there are problems. Um, for example, the new properties uh, is owned currently SR2, 
and SR2 allows for dense residential development. And the fact of the matter is that the town's um, wastewater capacity just isn't sufficient to um, accommodate large development there. And the same thing is true for, for the Neiman property. When that was developed, there were arrangements made to accommodate the residential development, but if it isn't developed as proposed, what would be appropriate? So um, the town gave some thought to this, and the uh, proposal, and, and again, it's split because they're two really uh, separate districts that we're dealing with. The one you're going to deal with in a minute is PRD, whereas this is SR2. Um, is to have 9W as a commercial corridor. It's already largely a commercial corridor from the New Windsor uh, boundary south. Um, and it's zoned HC for the most part down that, which allows retail development um, along the roadway. And it would be HC in from 9W for a fair amount of distance. And then beyond that, for the remaining portion of the property, and it'll be the same thing when you see the next public hearing, uh, the property would be uh, zoned PCD, which allows for a little bit of uh, more variety in the types of commercial use that's developed and a, a little bit less um, <coughs> environmental hip, uh, footprint, if you will, for, for, uh, for that development. So that's the overall proposal. This law is the, if you will, um, eastern side of 9W half of that implementation of the comprehensive plan. Thank you. I'll now declare the public hearing open. Is there anyone to speak uh, on this proposal? Well, yes. Can you give your name and address to the Yes. It's, uh, my name is Richard Mann, uh, I'm an attorney with Catania Mann, Milligram and Ryder, one Corwin Court in Newburgh. And uh, good evening board members and uh, Supervisor Rand uh, I'm here beha on behalf of the New York Military Academy, also called NEMA. What I would like to do is I have an original and five copies to hand up correspondence and then just make some short comments about it if I may do that. That's fine. represent EMA, and we're here tonight in connection with Local Law Number 4, which uh, purports to rezone most of NEMA's main campus from the, the suburban residential district to the Highway Commercial HC and a planned commercial development. I'll say at the outset that NEMA appreciates the town's efforts to spur economic development by essentially converting what is permitted in the residential zone to a commercial to commercial uses. Uh, we believe the, pro the property's proximity to state uh, Route 9W could attract much needed rateables. We also believe it makes sense. To extend the HC district in this area, we believe it's good planning. But the only exception we have, the only concern we have, is that the proposed rezoning could create some unintended consequences and limit NEMA's ability to expand, alter, and update its facilities in the future. In, in, in essence, if these two zones, uh, if, if this zone is converted from residential to commercial, it would have the unintended result of creating a non-conforming use for this private school for the first time in its 127 years. I believe that that's not, that's not the intention here. The intention is to create more commercial zones and more rateables ultimately. But non-conforming uses, as you know, are deemed to be detrimental to the master plan. And any kind of zoning code or any kind of comprehensive scheme is always a public policy to eventually eliminate non-conforming uses. That's usually the public policy. You'll read that in pretty much any zoning law or any kind of master plan. Please be advised that NEMA has no plans to cease operations. Rather, over time, NEMA hopes to reinvigorate, regenerate, and repopulate this private school to make it what it was at one time in the past. Submitted with the letter and attached in the original and five copies, therefore, is NEMA's five-year plan. So you can look out and, and it can answer a lot of questions in terms of what NEMA intends to do and what improvements it intends to have looking forward. If NEMA, we submit, is classified as a non-conforming use, it would make continued operations of the school very difficult. Um, there are many reasons, whether it would be ZPA approval or planning board approval, when you have a non-conforming use, 
even the simplest things like expanding or rehabilitating or renovating requires coming back and jumping through multiple hoops to get approvals. And that in the past was not required of NEMA. So if NEMA is moved from an existing permitted use to a non-conforming use, it would have to live with that stigma. And uh, we believe it would make it more difficult in the future to continue. So therefore, the main point that we'd like to convey tonight is that NEMA requests that the town board amend the allowable uses in the HC and PCD zoning district so that this school is not labeled as a non-conforming use. As many of you know, NEMA was founded in 1889, and the school's history is set forth in detail in the five-year plan that we've submitted. And even on the school's website, you'll see in, in clear language that the process, that the uh, NEMA's main concern is to uh, create young leaders who are inspired, engaged, and ready. And even in um, the five-year plan, NEMA once again sets forth in clear language what the vision of the school is. And the vision is to be the premier private co-educational college preparatory school using military organization and traditions in the United States. As many of you know, NEMA is located on about 120 acres, just east of Route 9W and north of Academy Avenue. Its existing facilities across its property include two classroom buildings, administrative offices, three dormitories, a dining hall, a gymnasium, two indoor swimming pools, an outdoor swimming pool, athletic fields, and faculty residences. NEMA also owns approximately 35 acres on the western side of 9W that's already uh, zoned HC. And as many of you also know, is that NEMA filed a petition under Chapter 11 of the U.S. Bankruptcy Code in March of last year. As a result of that bankruptcy proceeding, all of its real property was sold in October of last year to a not-for-profit organization called the Research Center on Natural Conservation in order to pay off NEMA's creditors. As I mentioned, NEMA's plan is to emerge from bankruptcy, to reorganize, and to continue operating as a private school. That is the goal of NEMA, and that is the goal of the property owner for the property itself. Um, the owner of the property, the research center, it has as its own stated goals as a New York not-for-profit corporation to encourage innovative uh, nature conservation methods, to foster preservation of the environment, and to organize support for environmental issues, including the preservation of the environment for future generations. In the view of NEMA and this owner, maintaining this historic property is preserving the heritage of the area for future generations. So both NEMA and the Research Center are, are pledged to see the enrollment uh, increase to make NEMA not only known locally, but nationally and even internationally. We believe that private schools like NEMA serve the public good and the public welfare by providing education and leadership uh, skills for future generations. We believe NEMA is worth preserving. We believe the history surrounding this property is worth preserving as well. And so for that reason, in order to restore aging facilities, in order to renovate, in order to um, make the classrooms modern, there needs to be ongoing renovations in the future. And if NEMA is classified as a non-conforming use, that will make these improvements much more difficult for the future. And so uh, we are asking that, uh, we are saying essentially that it is a good thing, it's good planning to change these zoning districts. But we ask that NEMA be carved out or not be considered a non-conforming use going forward because that hasn't been the history over its 127 years. In summary, we believe the town and NEMA have enjoyed a symbiotic, a mutually beneficial relationship and a close union over the years. We believe that a strong and a healthy NEMA will provide economic and public welfare benefits to the whole community. And respectfully, we believe it's in the town's best interest to support NEMA. We therefore endorse the overall zoning change, but we object to the removal of the educational use for NEMA's long-standing zoning district. We therefore ask the town to seriously consider making these minor adjustments to the proposed zone change for the benefit of the community and to preserve NEMA. And if there are any questions, um, I can be contacted. I have here tonight with me my colleague, John First, and also the secretary and treasurer of NEMA, and that's Jim Zhu as well.
Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak on the local law? Yes. Can you give your name and address to the clerk, please? Virginia Scott, 36 Willow Avenue. Um, at first, when I was hearing this proposal, I was quite excited that for once commercial <coughs> was going to come to Cornwall because as a taxpayer, the burden is basically on homeowners and the lack of commercial development has been a problem in Cornwall for many years. Um, but here in this side, I'm kind of surprised that NEMA, you know, especially the new owners after what everything that they've got, you know, the town and NEMA have gone through to sell this property, that there really doesn't seem like you really knew very much what was going on in this. And um, can you explain that? Well, the public hearing is for the opportunity for you to give no, your I views to the board. Just, like all this yeah. planning and all this time, like, why weren't, you know, wasn't there any well, kind of collaboration? Well, that's, that's the purpose, purpose of the public hearing is to okay. hear from the public. Um, oh, I, I hope know, there is because I think it's a good, it's a good thing for this academy to stay the way it's supposed to be. Thank you. That's why we appreciate the, the okay. comments Thank that you. we received from the public. Anyone else wishing to speak? Public hearing? Hearing no one, there's a motion to close the public hearing with the, oh, Steve, you want to make a comment? No, no, you, you, you nailed it right there. You, you should close the public hearing with the exception of right. receiving the report from county planning and uh, the planning board's planning report. Board. I'd suggest also, Dick, I haven't had a chance to see what was handed in, but you might want a brief report from me in regard to uh, the, the zoning issues raised. Maybe we can just pass that on to so, Steve. Yeah, and then you can take that. We'll make a copy for okay, Peter. Very Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but with those exceptions, close the public. Thank you. All right. That, that'll be fine. With, so the third one would be a report from Mr. Gavin in response. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunk? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Rendetta? Yes. The motion is carried. And the third public hearing is on local law number five. Please take notice the town board of town of Cornwall will hold a public hearing on the ninth day of May 2016 at 7 o'clock p.m. Town Hall 183 Main Street, Cornwall, New York, on a proposed local law number five of the year 2016, entitled A Local Law to Amend Town Code Chapter 158, entitled Zoning. They have certain uses to the uses permitted in the planned re residential development, PRD district, as alternatives to planned adult communities. The purpose of the local law is to implement the provisions of the town's comprehensive plan by amending the use table for the planned residential development, PRD district, adding uses permitted in the plan's commercial development to the uses permitted in the PRD zone as district as alternatives to planned adult communities. A copy of the proposed local law is on file in the Office of the Town Clerk and available for inspection by interested persons during the town clerk's business hours. The town board will, at the above date, time, and place, hear all persons interested in the subject matter hereof. Persons may appear in person or by agent. All written communications addressed to the board must be received by the board at or prior to the public hearing by order of the town board, town of Cornwall, or not a McGee town clerk. Steve, I think you gave the overview last time on the logo. Is there anything you want to add to local law number five? The only five? thing I, I would add is that um, this one, is, it, it is a mirror image of the, the eastern side of 9W. But the difference is on the western side, you have property zone PRD, which is a specific type of, of zoning uh, designed to permit a uh, pre-planned, if you will, development. In this case, it's a uh, senior housing complex. Whereas the zoning on the eastern side is uh, your garden variety zoning, typical of any zone in the town. On um, the western side, uh, the addition um, to the PRD is in the alternative. That is, this isn't in addition to what can be developed as PRD, it's in the alternative. So uh, if somebody wants to go forward with a senior development on the western side in that PRD zoning, they can do that, but they can't develop uh, as per HC or PCD. If they don't want to go forward with senior development and they want to develop under HC or PCD zoning, any of the permitted uses, they can. So it's an alternative to the uh, PRD zoning, the senior housing that's permitted now. Um, it's not in addition to it. Okay. okay. I'll now declare the public hearing open. Is there anyone wishing to speak on the proposed local law number five? Hearing no one, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing subject to, with the exclusive uh, report that'll be coming from the county planning department and the, uh, our town planning board. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Discussion? 
Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. The motion is carried. Thank you. We're now going to uh, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance and we'll start our regular meeting. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have approval of minutes of April 4, special meeting, April 11, regular meeting, special meeting of the board, April 22, 2016. Is there a motion on the minutes? So moved. For a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. Motion is carried. Public comment on agenda items. Anyone wishing to speak on any agenda item? Yes, Carla? My name is Carla Castillo. I live at 69 Hasbrook Avenue. I wanted to make a comment regarding the first agenda item on um, work session minutes. Um, I understand that, uh, as was said during the work session, that a lot of the information that's presented during the work session is repetitious, repeats what is being presented during the regular town board meeting. However, um, I do think there's one piece that is missing, and that would be the co public comment. Um, and I would like to recommend that in some shape or form, the public comment be officially recorded during the work session uh, meeting, either as just notes taken during the public comment period, uh, period or maybe the recording shared um, on the website. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on the uh, agenda items? Okay, hearing none. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm Jim McGee, 30 Lakeview Trail. Uh, I just wanted to uh, um, mention, uh, I see that you're gonna um, uh, hire a uh, manager for the farmer's market. I wanted to, to uh, give my support to Beth Davis. I, I know she's one of the uh, one of the applicants for the position. Uh, as a fellow member of the Greater Chamber of Commerce, uh, Cornwall Chamber of Commerce, I think she's got the right disposition for it. Uh, I don't know if you all know it, but she was born and raised on a farm. And with her retail experience, I think that makes her a great fit. So I just want to put my comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, first item on the agenda is uh, work session minutes. Uh, we did have a uh, discussion actually a while ago with, uh, with the town clerk with regard to minutes. And uh, this year, the, the board has uh, decided that we're going back to work sessions for the first uh, meeting of the month. It's an opportunity for the town board to discuss the uh, the issues that are before the board um, and we don't plan on taking action at, uh, at during work sessions. If we do have uh, matters that we will uh, have to take action on, we will actually hold a special meeting and then when we're done with the motions uh, acting on town business, we'll close the public uh, meeting and then we'll go into the work session. The work session is really the opportunity for the town board to just freely and openly discuss the, uh, the matters are, that are before the board. Uh, we do welcome public input at that time, but you know, minutes are not required uh, for that session. So the clerk, it actually saves some, some work for the clerk because she doesn't have to transcribe the, uh, the work session. And it's, not a, there's, it's no requirement for an official record because the town board is not taking action at work sessions. So uh, this, and we found that most of it's redundant, a high percentage of the issues that we deal with at the work session discussion do come to the regular town board meeting where the board does take action. So um, this will all around save everyone having to prepare the minutes and review the minutes. And but we do welcome public comment for the board to consider. Next, I have a resolution on uh, Beaver Dam Lake water. Uh, Steve might want to just comment on what this request is for. This is a transfer of ownership of the Beaver Dam Lake Transportation Corporation. And just as town approval is needed when a transportation corporation is formed, so too it's needed when ownership is transferred. Um, we're not aware of any reason to object to the transfer of ownership here, so our recommendation to work with the, uh, the approval. Okay, I have a resolution, whereas the Town of Cornwall has received a petition for transfer of municipal consent from Beaver Dam Lake Water Corporation, BDL, to New York American Water Company, Inc., NYAW, 
whereas the petition requests the town to approve the transfer of the municipal consent from BDL to NYAW, and therefore be resolved as follows. One, that the town board hereby accepts the annexed petition and consents to the transfer of municipal consent from BDL to NYAW for the purpose of supplying the town of Cornwall and its inhabitants with a water system, and two, that the supervisors authorize to execute any and all documents related to said municipal consent. Is there a motion on the resolution? Second. second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Yes. Motion is carried. Next, I uh, have a certificate of recognition for Kathy Elick. This certificate is presented to Kathy Elick by the Town of Cornwall in recognition of outstanding service and leadership on the Conservation Advisory Council from 2009 through 2016. A witness hereof, we have caused a certificate to be signed this ninth day of May in the year 2016, signed by Richard Randazzo, Supervisor, and Renata McGee, Town Clerk. Kathy, you come on up today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we really appreciate all your efforts and the sincerity that you brought to uh, the issues that are so important to so many of us in conservation and environmental. We wish you the very best. Good, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Is it on recycled paper? <laughs> <laughs> she's going to hang on to that for a while. <laughs> I have a resolution regarding uh, the COVAC contract. Um, we did extend the contract a couple of months ago with COVAC while the board is in discussions on a long-term uh, solution. And uh, we're still in those discussions with COVAC, so I do have a resolution to extend the agreement uh, to uh, July 1st. Whereas heretofore the town has established the Cornwall Amish District, which incorporates substantially all of the unincorporated area of the town, as well as the village of Cornwall and Hudson. Whereas the Corn Volunteer Ambulance Corps, COVAC is willing to operate ambulance vehicles and provide pre-hospital emergency medical service within the ambulance district and is also willing to enter into a contract for provision of such services within the town's ambulance district. And whereas the 2013 contract between the parties was extended to July 1st, 2016, whereas it's appropriate for the town on behalf of the ambulance district and COVAC to extend the contract for services from 20, July 1st, 2016 to November 1st. Guess what, it was June 30th we extended? I thought it was, I apologize for that. At the work session, I thought it was extended through June. It was in fact extended through July. Through July, okay. So now we're going July, August, to November 1st. October, and that'll take you to November 1st. Hopefully we'll have it resolved before then. Oh. This will give us enough time so we're not doing this again. It, it will, it just to continue it, and we are we are talking to call back on it. Well, a new long-term contract is negotiated. Now, therefore, be resolved as follows, that the town board hereby extends the contract between the ambulance district and COVAC from July 1st, 2016 to November 1st, 2016. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Rantes? Yes. Motion is carried. Okay, next we have a notice from Orange County, a road closing notice, Taylor Road, and. Pleasant Hill Road, the, uh, the county will be closing uh, the Taylor Road, uh, and actually at Pleasant Hill Road, to uh, replace the uh, Taylor Road bridge. Uh, it was anticipated the road would be closed on or about May 2nd. I don't think it's occurred yet. Uh, but from the time it's closed, this is where they get very precise, it'll be approximately 152 days that uh, It'll be, uh, it'll be closed. So they, they put up signs and they just want to notify the public that, uh, that the road will be closed for that period of time. And I think emergency services have all been notified. So. We have a letter from a resident on uh, Broadway. They are requesting that the town board uh, consider installing a four-way stop at the intersection uh, of Broadway and Bridge Street, uh, indicating that traffic uh, 
They feel that people are driving at high rates of speed from Willow Avenue to the uh, traffic circle, and uh, they've asked the board to uh, consider installing this stop sign. So uh, what I'd like to have is a motion from the board to refer this to uh, Chief Hazard and the highway superintendent for their review, uh, report, and recommendations at our next town board meeting. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Hendes? Yes. Motion's carried. And authorization permit conference as the uh, workers' comp carrier has a, uh, an annual meeting and conference with some training sessions and uh, just like the board to authorize me to attend uh, for the training session but also to uh, be able to meet with our uh, claims adjusters and other personnel from uh, PERMA to uh, continue to review our workers' comp program in, in hopes of bringing down the costs, uh, which have really skyrocketed in recent years. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. And Mr. Rendez? Yes. The motion is kept. Next, I have a memo from Chief Hazard. Respectfully request the following item be added to the Monday meeting. We discuss at the work session. Respectfully request authorization to attend the annual New York State Association of Chiefs Training Conference to be held July 10th through the 14th in Buffalo, New York. Conference registration is $200 and lodging is $152 per night for a total of $808 for registration and lodging. There's funding in the Chiefs Training line of the police budget. Is there a motion to approve the training? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Schoenfield? Yes. Mr. Rondez? Yes. Motion is carried. Chief gave us a memo regarding unwanted prescription drug collection unit. We respectfully request the town board consider the placement of an unused prescription drug collection box in the lobby of the police station. This would be a secure collection similar in design to a mail collection unit. As you're no doubt aware, unwanted and unused prescription drugs can often be abused and if not disposed of properly, can contaminate the groundwater. Currently, there are programs available that would provide the police department with the collection unit at no cost to the town. The police department would be responsible for quarterly reporting of the collected drugs and annual disposal of same. Currently, there is a licensed incinerator in Dutchess County that has agreed to incinerate the drugs at no charge to the agency. The town board's interest in pursuing we need a letter of support from the board. Uh, certainly, given the issues that are coming up with the uh, abuse of uh, prescription drugs, having a uh, drop-off in our community that would be easily accessible uh, would be very beneficial to, uh, to the whole community as well as individuals that uh, certainly want to dispose of their, their drugs properly. So I have a resolution. Whereas the town board has received a request from Police Chief Todd Hazard to consider the placement of unused prescription drug collection box in a police station lobby. Whereas unwanted and unused prescriptions can often be abused and if not disposed of properly can contaminate the groundwater, whereas presently there are programs available that would provide police department with the secure collection units at no cost to the town, and therefore be resolved as follows. One, that the town board hereby approves the install installation of an unused prescription drug collection box in the police station lobby, and two, the town board hereby authorize the police department to prepare quarterly reports of the collected drugs to annually dispose of the collected drugs all at no cost to the town. Is there a motion on the resolution? Second. 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 Move the second discussion. Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Arndes? Yes. Motion is carried. <coughs> I have a letter from the Department of uh, Public Service. Public Service Commission directed staff to develop a process for commission consideration of clean energy standards program. The mandates are that by the year 2030, half the electricity used in the state will come from renewable resources such as solar, wind, and hydro. To ensure all full public participation in this proceeding, the department will conduct a series of informational sessions and public statement hearings to seek input and comments from the community on the staff's white paper and the cost of the study. The, uh, looking at their list, the nearest uh, seems to be Kingston City Hall, Thursday, May 26th. Uh, information session at 2, public statement hearing at 3, and then again at night at 6 and 7. So we just want to let the public know that uh, we have information available if anyone's interested, uh, any board member, member of the public is interested in attending. First, the Heights Water District. Um, 
a few years ago, the town uh, borrowed money. The First Cliff Heights Water District has somewhere around 140 customers, mostly residential, some commercial. And a couple of years ago, the town board uh, bonded uh, the purchase of uh, replacement meters for the entire district. Um, unfortunately, at that time, they didn't include actually installing the meters. So we probably have about 90 meters that are uh, in storage. And really, the wisest thing we could do is move forward and install the rest of these meters and replace the old meters, some of which are original and probably over 50 years old, um, to make sure that the meters are accurate and, uh, and that the district is being properly administered. Um, also, we had the, uh, I think it was in December or January of, uh, January of last year or December of 2014, the board uh, adopted a uh, local law that imposed a $60 fee for replacement of the meters. And we've had uh, six residents who've had to replace the meters in that period of time. So what I'd like to propose to the board is that we uh, authorize moving ahead with the installation of the remainder of the, uh, the meters into all of the, uh, the properties and that the uh, six residents who paid to have their old meters replaced uh, during the past year, that they be refunded the $60. Um, so I will read a resolution, whereas the town of Cornwall has purchased replacement meters for the Firthcliffe Heights Water District, whereas the town board wishes to institute a program under which all meters in the district are replaced at district expense, whereas within the last 18 months several property owners within the district requested and received replacement water meters at a cost of $60 each, whereas it would be wasteful to install new water meters for said properties at which meters were recently installed and accordingly propose that in lieu of their, thereof the district will refund the aforesaid $60 payment to said property owners and leave the existing meters in place at those properties. And therefore be resolved as follows, that the town board hereby approves and directs the installation of new water meters for all properties in the district at district expense, except as provided below. And two, that for all properties within the district at which new water, water meters were installed within the last 18 months, the existing water meters shall be left in place and the property owners shall be refunded the $60 fee paid for the installation of the same. Is there a motion on the resolution? Second. Or second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunz? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazza? Yes. Motion is second. Next item, it's a big item for us. It's uh, single stream recycling. We, uh, we met with our highway superintendent who oversees sanitation and uh, we want to credit Eugene Conley and his staff for putting together a, a plan for implementing single stream recycling in the town of Cornwall. The village already does uh, single stream. And so what this will mean is uh, once the, uh, the date starts and we're, we're looking to begin the program uh, starting uh, the week of June 6th and uh, at that time there, there's five areas of the town each area of uh, the recyclables we pick, picked up on a specific day. And uh, the good news is all the recyclables can go into one container. So it's everything. We're not, so you don't have to sort out cardboard, paper, plastic, metal, cans, glass, everything will go in one container. We'll be picking it up once a week. And uh, so we have put on our website uh, just a, a notice that we're gonna circulate, plus a copy of the map that indicates the areas, the five different areas that uh, the days will be designated. And in addition, uh, Carla uh, of our Conservation Advisory Council has given us the updated list, the current list of recyclables. We're gonna also, uh, that's on the website. Um, so it's really important that the, the residents, uh, if they're not sure of how the program works, to call the number that's uh, the highway garage at 845-534-2171. And uh, the other thing that we are going to do, we're going to, we'll be putting this in the Cornwall Local, but prior to the, uh, the week of June 6th, when the uh, sanitation goes around and picks up recycling in the different neighborhoods, we're hoping to have a notice that will be specifically for that neighborhood that will be taped to their container and it will tell them what day of the week going <laughs> forward the recyclables will be picked up. We think this would be the best way to inform them on an individual basis we're going to invest a lot of man hours to do this, but in the long run, we'll probably save man hours. Uh, but I think it's something that the residents are really going to find very convenient, uh, which makes it nice setting the recyclables out just once a week on a specific day. 
the other thing that we really hope to do is increase the uh, amount of recycling that we can really get out of the community. We think if we make it easier and, and streamline it, that it will encourage our, our residents to separate from the garbage, which saves us money by not having to pay the tipping fees to dispose of the, uh, the garbage that, that's picked up. So we are going to get this information out in as many ways that we can, but we're really uh, very uh, optimistic that it's going to work very well for the community. And uh, again, I want to thank uh, Eugene Conley and his staff for really putting together, which was not an easy uh, task, to really break the community down into the five different areas so that there could be one day a week for each of those areas. So we're going to look forward to, uh, to doing that. Bridge Street Parking, this is the, uh, we got a letter from John Palella. Um, this pertains to Bridge Street on the Main Street side, which obviously the bridge is closed and there's no through traffic. Uh, one of the problems that's occurring is people are pulling into that little space and parking their vehicles. So uh, he's requested that the town of Lake take a look at it to see how we can restrict uh, the parking in that area because the problem is when you pull in, it's really a one-way street, but you have nowhere to go but come back out uh, with it. So I've discussed it with the Chief Hazard and with the Highway Superintendent, so I'd like a motion from the Board to refer this matter to uh, the Chief and the Highway Superintendent to review and uh, report back to the Town Board with recommendations at our next month's meeting. So moved. For a second? Discussion? <coughs> Roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazza? Yes. The motion is carried. Next is a resolution uh, for the company, CPI, uh, HR. This is a company that the town retained the services last year to assist uh, in gathering information and really monitoring for the Affordable Care Act for health insurance uh, coverage. It's a very complicated process, and unfortunately, if we don't get it exactly right, the town will be subject to penalties. Uh, so. They've worked very closely with the town over the past year, so for the next year we'd, uh, we'd like to extend the contract to uh, have CPI work with the town uh, because there are markers mm -hmm. on this whole program for the Affordable Care Act, and this will help see us through. Uh, the, the cost, I believe, is $7,800 for the year, uh, the same as last year. So I'll read the resolution, whereas the town has received a proposed ACA assistance agreement between the Town of Cornwall and Corporate Plans, Inc., doing business as CPI HR, and whereas the agreement would permit CPI to provide the town with services listed therein for a period of one year commencing May 1st, 2016, whereas it would be in the interest, best interest of the town to enter into the agreement with CPI. Now therefore be resolved as follows, the town board hereby agrees to enter into the next ACA assistance agreement between the town and CPI and authorize the supervisor to execute the same. Is there a motion on the resolution? So Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Mr. Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Arndt? Yes, the motion is carried. <laughs> Next, uh, the Conservation Advisory Council has been busy at work, and Councilman Summerfield is the liaison, so I will let him uh, briefly explain the, uh, the bylaws that we have before us tonight. Right, what we have before you is the uh, Town of Cornwall Conservation Advisory Council bylaws. Um, they're principally taken from existing uh, Town of Cornwall code, so I will dispense with reading all of the, the details of membership and meeting attendance and terms, uh, but I would like to read the mission statement. <coughs> the Town of Cornwall, nestled in the hills of the Hudson Highlands, is surrounded by and adjacent to many beautiful scenic areas, including Storm King Mountain, Black, Forest, Black Rock Forest, and Mighty Hudson River. The town is also home to a wealth of natural, historic, and recreational resources that are enjoyed by and, by and nurture our local and visiting community. These include forests, preserved lands, greenways, and trails, parks, wetlands, and groundwater, <coughs> creeks, farmland, and historic sites. The council shall contribute to the preservation of these resources and improvement of the local environmental and the town's quality of life by providing the town informed advice on environmental matters and land use planning. 
Through these efforts, the Council shall foster our community's cultural, environmental, and economic vibrancy. To that end, the Council will perform the following activities. Land use, land cover, and biodiversity research and education, including open space, wetlands, and natural resource inventories and maps. Advise, cooperate, and work with an other official and unofficial municipal agencies involved in similar activities. Disseminate and publish informational and educational literature, such as pamphlets, books, maps, charts, should say Facebook, internet pages, and other plans. Uh, administer special projects designed to promote the intelligent use of local resources through education and action. Update inventories and maps, and prepare the council's annual report. Okay. Do I need to read anymore? No, I think that's fine. I think we're good. <laughs> it's all good reading. Is there a motion to uh, approve the, uh, the bylaws for the advisory council? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randez? Thank you. Thank you, Michael, and thank you to the members of the mm -hmm. Advisory Council for putting that together for us. I have a letter from the uh, Greater Cornwall Chamber regarding the, uh, last year it was called uh, Paper Shred, Shred Day. Mm -hmm. This year they renamed it Cornwall Goes Green Recycle Day. Uh, the Chamber's plan to have an annual event um, to be held on Saturday, June 11th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Town Hall parking lot. The years past, the town co-sponsored the event with us. Legal shred charge is $750 for three hours split between the town and the chamber would be at $375 each. We'd like to request the town sanitation department be part of the event to pick up electronics we collect. The event will consist of collecting recyclable items such as paper to be collected by shred, legal shred, electronics, collected by Cornwall Sanitation Department, prescription drugs be collected by the Orange County Sheriff's Office, eyeglasses and hearing aids be collected by the Lions Club and closed for donation. Uh, the Chamber would like to request to have the recycling event put on the schedule for the May work session of the Town Board uh, meeting. In addition to that, uh, Carla has indicated for recycling that she would like to have a table set up to uh, have information available on the uh, recycling program that we have and, and really help boost our you know, single uh, source. So, is there a motion to uh, approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Andes? Yes, the motion is kept. We have a request from uh, Cancer Research uh, Institute. It's a uh, non-competitive cycling event in which fundraising proceeds benefit cancer immuno immunotherapy research. Uh, they estimate about 400 participants. They're requesting two officers at each intersection at the locations indicated uh, and that we could contact when with the cost. Uh, the date of this is June 25th. We did uh, have Chief Hazard take a look and provide a uh, cost estimate for the uh, officers and I have a memo from the chief uh, indicating that it would cost $462 to man the two locations. That will allow for two part-time officers, two officers on overtime. Is there a motion to uh, approve the event with the uh, reimbursement of the $462 to the town? So moved. Sorry. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randes? Yes. Motion is carried. A letter from Black Rock Bass Busters. This year, the Black Rock Bass Busters would like to have permission to hold its youth day fishing derby in the town of Cornwall at Rings Pond. Youth Day fishing contest will be Saturday, June 25th, 2016, with registration from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., the derby from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., with a rain date of the 26th. The event will be open to all children ages 5 through 15. Although there are top prizes for the most and largest fish, all participants will receive prizes. Any questions, please contact me at home. Mike Berkery, Chairman, Black Rock Bass Busters. Um, it's a great event. I remember years ago when we had the fishing contests and I used to spend the whole day there just fishing. Uh, so it's something the kids really enjoy. We us they usually get a great turnout for it and uh, we appreciate uh, Black Rock having this uh, annual event. Is there a motion to approve the event? Second. For a second, move second discussion. 
Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Funk? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. Motion is carried. Okay. Uh, the Pilgrim Pipeline. Assemblyman uh, Scartatos has uh, introduced a bill in the Assembly. Uh, it's Bill A9831A. And uh, it's uh, in opposition to and really in every effort that we can take to try and stop this Pilgrim Pipeline from proceeding. I'd like to read the uh, resolution supporting uh, this bill. Whereas the Town Board of Town of Cornwall wishes to express our collective support for proposed legislation A9831A, an act to amend the public authorities law and environmental conservation law in relation to the construction of a pipeline property under the control of pro pipeline property under the control of New York State Thruway Authority. And whereas history has shown time and time again that oil and petroleum pipelines are demonstrably dangerous and pose a substantial threat to our water resources, natural lands, endangered species, homes, and most importantly, people. And whereas oil and petroleum pipelines constructed longitudinally along the New York State Thruway Authority property would cross hundreds of streams, wetlands, and water bodies, pass over numerous drinking water aquifers and traverse through or in close proximity to residences, schools, public parks, and businesses. And whereas pipelines are prone to leakage and if an accident were to occur along the throughway, the consequences might be catastrophic. Whereas we rely on water and lands through which the proposed pipeline will be built, that if contaminated would poison our drinking water and diminish the health and quality of life for everyone in the area. Whereas it would cost our communities millions of dollars to attempt to address the effects a leak would have on our drinking water, open spaces, homes, farmlands, and streams. Whereas our landscapes and idyllic sites along the throughway, which attract thousands of tourists every year, would be put at risk, and any spillage would thus prove harmful to our economic base. Whereas organizations building a pipeline would take advantage of the eminent domain laws to force themselves onto the properties of homeowners, in spite of the fact that homeowners may object and or receive inadequate compensation. Whereas pipelines can leak for an indefinite period of time and accidents are typically discovered only after the ramifications have been felt, often members of the public and first responders. Studies indicate that most sophisticated detection technologies do not have a satisfactory record of identifying and stopping leaks before it can inflict damage. Whereas the magnitude of any leak would be enormous and the consequences dire as a quart of oil can pollute up to a quarter million gallons of drinking water. Whereas pipelines are not inspected to a degree at which the safety of all New Yorkers could be guaranteed. Only 135 hazardous material safety administration inspectors watch over 2.6 million miles of pipeline, enough material to circle the globe several times over. And whereas municipal fire departments are currently unequipped to combat pipeline-related accidents in preparation for an adequate response to such events would entail a substantial amount of funding and training. Without sufficient equipment, training, or finances, our local firefighters and other first responders would be put at great risk when called to duty. Whereas we have enjoyed the natural scenic views and benefits they afford us for years, and a pipeline would significantly detract from the New York experience. A pipeline would require over 100 construction and maintenance access roads. Moreover, large and noticeable shutoff valves would be frequently placed above ground along the route with a higher concentration at environmentally sensitive locations such as wetlands and waterways. Whereas the only groups that stand to gain from construction of such pipelines are the pipeline owners and shareholders, and these benefits come at the expense of our lands, our natural resources, our flora and fauna, our economy, and our health. And whereas in the 2016 State of State Address, Governor Cuomo declared that by 2030, 50% of the state's energy must come from renewable sources to fulfill his spirit entails refraining from investing in hazardous sources of energy like petroleum and crude oil. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the town board stands united in staunch opposition to a pipeline project on the New York State Thruway and through our towns, cities, and villages and on behalf of all the people in our communities. And be it further resolved that this resolution is in support of Bill A9831A introduced by Assemblyman Frank Scartados of the 104th District. And as such, does hereby authorize the supervisor to sign any letter to that effect. And be it further resolved that copies of this signed resolution be sent to the governor of New York and state legislative representatives as such request that they support and co-sponsor the bill. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. By Michael, second. Terry? Yes. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Antez? Yes. Motion is carried. And I think we should emphasize that we really want to call upon our governor to step up 
come out and oppose this pipeline and just say that he is going to fight with us so that no pipeline will be built down the New York State Thruway and through our communities. The governor has that power, and the governor should, should execute that power and just put this to rest rather than putting all of these communities at risk and forcing local officials, municipalities along the route, and all the residents to have to spend endless hours and go to great expense to stop this pipeline, which makes absolutely no sense to the residents of the Hudson Valley. So we will convey that also to the governor that he should step up to the plate and just say no to that pipeline. So I think uh, I'm hoping there'll be a lot of support for, uh, for some of this Scartato's uh, legislation. I have a request from uh, Chief Hazard. Uh, I, we have a new police car on order, and uh, the chief has requested that the board uh, authorize uh, HV public safety lighting to uh, equip this vehicle with, and I must emphasize because of the price, it's $11,248. It's not just lights. This is for really all the equipment, it's the cages and gun racks and all the, uh, the equipping that the, uh, the vehicle needs. And uh, as I said at the, the work session, that the, the new lights that are going on these police cars are, they're, they're great for protection of the police officers out there performing their duty and also the motorists and residents who are out there alongside the road and looking for the, uh, the safety of the, the vehicle to properly warn others that uh, something is going on. So while it's a lot of money, uh, it's not something that, you know, it'll, hopefully we'll get four or five, maybe even six years cheap out of the car. So is there a motion to approve Chief's request? So moved. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bone? Yes. Mr. Seinfeld? Yes. Mr. Arndasen? Yes, motion is carried. I have a letter from the uh, building inspector, T-Mobile, has requested to swap some equipment that are located on our tower. Uh, building inspector has given us a uh, letter, has reviewed T-Mobile's antenna and equipment swap proposal for town hall, monopole, and finds it in order and recommends the town board approve the modification. I have a resolution whereas the town has received a proposal from American Tower Corporation for a T-Mobile antenna and equipment swap at the existing tower located at Town Hall and whereas the building inspector has reviewed the proposal and finds it in order, recommends that the town board approve the modifications and that therefore be resolved as follows. The town board hereby approves the T-Mobile antenna and equipment swap proposal attached to this resolution and authorizes the supervisor to sign any and all documents relating to these modifications. Is there a motion on the resolution? Is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Rondes? Yes. The motion is carried. <coughs> Proposal to purchase uh, radio equipment. Uh, we were leasing uh, mm -hmm. some mobile radios and portable radios for buildings and grounds, uh, the building inspector, and also the senior bus. The annual lease for the equipment, there were a total of nine units is $3,480 per year. Um, we took a look at the, the needs. The town, we can really get by with, the, with six units, and actually, uh, by purchasing them, we will save considerable money uh, rather than leasing them. So while the lease for the eight units was $3,480, we can purchase the six units that we need, four mobile and two portable. Um, from Nicomco, these are refurbished Kenwood units uh, for a total of $1,350, we will own them and not be paying monthly or annual leases. I had a second proposal from Crudelli Communications for that equipment, uh, different models, but the same number of units, and that was $2,675. I'd like a motion to uh, authorize the purchase of the refurbished units from uh, Nikonco for $1,350. So moved. Second. Move, second, discussion, roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Arndes? Yes. The motion is carried. American Legion, uh, post 353, two events. Uh, one is going to be the Memorial Day Parade that will start at 10 o'clock on Monday, uh, May 30th. And the other is on uh, Sunday, the day before, the 29th of May. The Legion is having uh, what's going to become an annual picnic. We started last year with it, and uh, so it'll be from 11 to 4 uh, on the 29th. And uh, this year, 
for the uh, picnic. We're, we're honoring uh, Korean War and World War II uh, veterans. So we're hoping we get a good turnout for the, uh, for the picnic. Tickets are $10. And uh, it's really a good time. It, it, last year was the first year we did it. It was really a, a good event and, uh, to support the Legion and all the efforts that uh, they make in the community for our uh, patriotism. So is there a motion to approve the two events? Second. Move the second discussion. Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunny? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Arnazza? Yes, motion is carried. I have a memo from uh, Diane Hines uh, for the uh, building inspector. They've been looking at the uh, purchase of a uh, new vehicle to replace their, uh, their oldest vehicle, which we already declared surplus and put out for sale. Under state bid, uh, there's a, a 2016 Ford Focus for 1542 or yeah 14,000 $15,412 and a 2016 Jeep Patriot front wheel drive only for 18,372 and in discussing it with the department they, they have two other uh, vehicles which are all wheel drive and we feel that being able to just get a uh, just a regular car would, would serve their purpose and be more economical and lower price so uh, they did go to a local dealer for prices, but uh, I would recommend that the board approve the state bid on the 2016 Ford Focus for $15,412. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Arangas? Yes. Motion is carried. A letter from Mr. Gabba regarding local law number one of the year 2016. Amending Chapter 115A of the Cornwall Code, dear board members, the Secretary of State has advised that Local Law Number One of the Year 2016 was filed in the Secretary's Office on April 6, 2016, and is now in effect. Very truly yours, Stephen J. Gavin. That was the mass gathering audio visual. <laughs> Note that for the record. Uh, Paul Gould, a local artist that we all know and does great work. Uh, there are two uh, paintings. Uh, portrait of David Sands and Catherine Sands Ring that uh, were in the Sands Ring homestead. They're currently stored in the historian's office and uh, portrait date to the mid 19th century. Uh, they do need some restoration and uh, Mr. Gould has uh, offered to uh, do uh, restoration of both paintings for the town. At, uh, at no cost, that is donating his time and services, which is a great offer. I spoke with Paul, and he estimates that it probably takes four to five weeks probably for each of the pictures to be done. So hey, uh, we, we want to thank Paul and just a motion to approve and accept Paul's uh, offer of your work. <clears throat> Your second discussion, roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunn? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randez? Yes, motion is carried. We have two. Uh, projects that uh, have to be done. One is the, uh, we have to go back out for quotes on the sewer manhole rehabilitation project that went out last year. Uh, there were no bidders on the project. And the second one is uh, replacing the uh, steps, uh, the front steps of the uh, entrance to the town hall. I have a resolution just to authorize the engineer to put together a request for quotes. Whereas the town's consulting engineer, McGowie Hauser Etzel, has developed a request for quotations for the <laughs> for the sewer manhole rehabilitation project and the town hall front steps replacement project. Whereas the RFQ is virtually complete and notice of the same is ready for circulation, and therefore being resolved as follows, the town board hereby authorizes McGowie Hauser Etzel to complete the RFQ seeking proposals for the above projects. And two, the town board hereby authorizes notice of the RFQ to be published in the Cornwall Local and directs notice be posted on the website on the town clerk's bulletin board. And three, that all responses to the RFQ shall be due no later than, uh, if we can leave this open, I'll speak to the, uh, the engineer when make sure the work is done, and then we'll set the, uh, the, the date for the, uh, the opening. So is there a motion to approve, to authorize? And there would be, would be the, the blank spot in the resolution? Yes. No later than such date as shall be set by the town engineering consultant um, in consultation with the town supervisor. Correct. Did I say that? No. <laughs> okay. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Did we have a roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunn? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Arndazza? Yes. The motion is carried.
Okay, next item is to uh, create a, a senior advisory council. Uh, for, for many years, the, the town did have uh, a, a committee council that was uh, established for our senior citizens, and Councilwoman Bunt suggested that we uh, we go back to uh, setting up a committee. So, Helen, if you just want to touch on. Uh, yeah, I remember when I was supervisor and town board previous, we did have that senior advisory council, and um, it works out to have that contact between the seniors and us for their needs and what we can do and what they'd like us to do. And I think it's a good way. We have all these, you know, we have the conservation, we have economic, and I think the seniors should have some kind of representation also. So okay. that's why I'm suggesting us have that. All right, then I'd like to entertain a motion that we uh, establish a uh, committee uh, for senior citizen uh, advisory council and it consists of five members. Yes. And they can just. Uh, and then we'll solicit. We can solicit uh, those who are interested. So there's a motion to uh, authorize the committee. So moved. Helen, carry second. second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Andes? Yes, the motion is carried. I have a letter from the United States Environmental Protection Agency, Region 2, uh, reference Speedy's compliance sampling inspection at Frick Cliff Sewer District uh, Sewage Treatment Plant on March 15, 2016. Dear Mr. Andazzo, United States Environmental Protection Agency conducted a Speedy's compliance sampling inspection at Frick Cliff Sewer District Sewage Treatment Plant that revealed noncompliance issues at your facility as set forth in the accompanying notice of noncompliance. Within 45 days of receipt of this letter, please correct the noncompliance issues and notify U.S. EPA. Signed by John Kirschwar, Chief Monitoring Assessment Branch. Our, uh, we have CAMO that we contract with for operating the, uh, the sewer plants, and uh, they have written the letter uh, back to uh, the EPA, and uh, basically on, on every point that was brought up by uh, the inspector for the EPA, the, uh, the letter states on behalf of the town that we are in compliance of all of the DEC requirements for the plant. So whether there's a misunderstanding or what, but uh, that's going back to them. We'll, we'll see what kind of re response we get from them, but uh, the KMO uh, Management has assured us that we, we are in compliance at the first cook plant, and so that should not be a uh, there should not be any issues uh, there. But we'll we'll wait and see if we get a response from them. Next is a resolution uh, authorizing a traffic engineer to uh, just assist Leslie in uh, reviewing the uh, Secra work. Uh, see that correct for her. Uh, Evaluation on the zoning changes. That's right. There, you're going to receive a report from the town planner regarding the uh, seek review for the three local laws that you have before you. Should have that for next month. She says she needs assistance from the um, from a traffic engineer. She can of course tap the, the town engineering consultants that are on retainer, but an engineer you, you have to bring in separately, and that's what this resolution is about. A traffic engineer. Okay. Where is the town's planning consultant providing secret reviews on three proposed zoning local laws? Where is the town board has received a request from the planning consultant to engage a traffic engineer in order to generate some meaningful analysis on trip generation differences for proposed local laws four and five, and also to speak to the water and sewer considerations of each? And whereas it would be in the best interest of the town to engage a traffic engineer to provide such analysis? And therefore, be resolved as follows that the town board hereby authorizes the supervisor to engage Philip J. Greeley. Of Mazer Consulting to provide the above analysis in conjunction with the CICRA review of proposed local laws four and five. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Sorry. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? <coughs> Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Yes. The motion is carried. The next resolution is uh, pertaining to FEMA funds that the town received as a result of. Uh, Hurricane Irene, the damage to the sewer plant. Uh, now that we're working with the uh, EFC at the state level for uh, short-term and long-term funding, uh, we are obligated to turn over the monies that we receive from FEMA to uh, the state as part of the overall financing package. And uh, 
I just need this resolution approved so we can move forward because we're at a critical time with EFC on getting all the final work done for their presentation to their board. Whereas the town board has heretofore received funds from FEMA in regard to the Shore Road Wastewater Treatment Plant, whereas it's necessary and appropriate for the town to pay over any remaining FEMA funds in its possession to EFC in connection with the pending application to EFC for grants and funding, and therefore be resolved as follows, that the town board does hereby authorize remittance of any FEMA funds in the town's possession to EFC in connection with said application for grants and funding. Is there a motion on the resolution? So moved. Second. Discussion? Manual? Yes, Helen. Do we have money for it? Actually, they, uh, they're putting together the exact amount. I be belief is that we received a little over half a million dollars. I believe there may be 300 some uh, thousand dollars uh, in that, that account. But also, we have a bond that the, the town took out for the $3.3 .3 million last year. So the, the difference between what FEMA gave us, what funds we have on hand, they, they will, the total amount that we received from that will be turned over to EFC. Okay. okay? That's part of the funding package. This pays down any debt that the town will incur for the wastewater treatment plant. It's not like you're losing the money. Yes. Okay. Right. It's shifting it from you to the EFC. So, okay. I mean, right. the extent that we have it, we're going to have to figure out the exact number. That's why it says any remaining funds. Right. But in order to get the funding and the grants from the EFC, you would have to pay what you can't have both. Okay. So, you're not losing it. No. <clears throat> No call. No, no call. I was, in, I was next. <laughs> no call. Yeah. Ms. Bunt? Yes. Mr. Turnfield? Yes. Mr. Andes? Yes. Motion carried. Received a uh, request from Steve Marion. Uh, he is looking to hold a uh, an event at the Girl Scout cabin. Uh, it's called the Rocket Launch and Barbecue. It's a recruiting event for the uh, Cub Scouts Pac-20. Uh, the event is to be held on May 22nd, 3 to 6. Uh, he said there's one small rocket, launches about 50 feet, small, compact engine, no firepower. So it's a little demonstration thing apparently you're going to do. And they are providing us with a certificate of insurance, yes. I'm told. So, uh, and I think this has probably been done in the past. So is there a motion to approve the event? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Rendez? Yes. The motion is carried. Okay, under personnel, uh, first item I have is appointing the uh, lifeguards for the upcoming season, the uh, recreation uh, coordinator. Karen has provided us with a list. Is there a motion to approve the hiring of the lifeguards? Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randes? Yes. Motion is carried. Have a request uh, from Chief Hazard respectfully requests the town consider hiring Brendan Latimer as part-time dispatcher at the prevailing rate of $16.47 per hour. Brendan is currently a criminal justice student and resides in Cornwall. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. second? Discussion? Roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Sunfield? Yes. Mr. Randazzo? Yes. The motion is carried. Appointments Conservation Advisory Council. I'm pleased to say that the Carla has recruited a couple of new members, and uh, we can vote on them uh, together. Uh, one is Nicholas Moran. His term would run through 12-31-17, and this is filling vacancies, so the, the dates, uh, they may vary a little bit. And the second letter that I have is from Marianne Variet. Vervey. Great interest and background in background on both these uh, these applicants, and uh, to fill a vacancy for a term that would uh, expire 12-31-16. Uh, um, and just so you know, the, the, it's a two-year term, so at, at the end of this year, it, you know, we would then make a reappointment for the, the following. So is there a motion to approve the two appointments? So Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Sunfield? Yes. Mr. Rendez? Yes, the motion is carried. Next, I have a memo from the highway superintendent. Uh, Eugene is recommending to rehire Phil Kropowski, Kropowski to fill a four-month summer seasonal position. Mr. Kropowski was part of our operation last summer. I believe he'll be uh, an asset again if approved to return. Uh, he's available to start work May 23rd with an hourly rate of 14 
dollars and sixty four cents. Funds have been approved in the budget. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Move second discussion. Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bund? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Arndt? Yes. Motion is carried. And I have, uh, based on a recommendation from the uh, Sands Ring Board of Trustees, they have uh, voted to uh, recommend to the board that we appoint Colleen Zlock, Z-L-O-C-K, as uh, chairperson of the uh, Sands Ring Board of Trustees. Is there a motion? Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randall? Yes. Motion is carried. Farmers Market Manager, uh, Councilman Russell and uh, Karen uh, interviewed. We had three applicants. I have an email from uh, Councilman Russell. It says, earlier tonight, Karen and I interviewed three applicants for the Farmers Market Manager position, uh, Sal Ruggiero, Beth Moore, and Mary Beth Greencraft. Each applicant interviewed well and exhibited different potential strengths. Therefore, it was a challenging task to determine a recommendation for the town board. However, it's also comforting to realize that talented individuals are anxious to serve the community. After discussing and considering current issues and long-term goals, we recommend Mary Beth Greencraft for the position. Please feel free to contact me any questions concerning the recommendation. Sincerely, Peter Russell. Is there a motion to appoint Mary Beth Greencraft Farm, Farmer's Market Manager? Is there a second? Sure. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Arndt? Yes. Motion is carried. And we have a vacancy in the uh, sanitation department, and uh, Highway Superintendent would like to have authorization to advertise the position. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Request? Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Arndt? Yes. Motion is carried. Uh, the last item that I've added is that the town board will be holding a special town board meeting on May 17th at 7 o'clock p.m. and the topic will be the uh, Cornwall sewer project. Okay, we have committee reports. Councilwoman Bunt. Me first? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'll start with uh, building and grounds. Uh, permits issued 24. CC issued seven, CO is issued three, no demolition, no blasting. On-site inspections were 32, complaints four, one stop work order, notice of violations 14, fire inspections 14, one court appearance, two signs removed, permit fees $4,401, and fees for municipal search, 3,300. Um, there are no planning board projects, and there is one zoning board project. And that's his report. <coughs> the seniors, um, we're gonna do that council. Hopefully that'll um, help me stay more in touch with them. And um, their calendar is here and posted, and I'm not gonna okay. read that off to you. Kovac. I'll go to their meeting tomorrow night, and um, Dick and I, you know, as the committee, have been working with them, and the proposals are going back and forth, and hopefully before the end of this next renewal, we'll come to some resolve. Okay. Councilman Summerfield? Uh, the Cornwall Advisory Committee uh, conducted a cleanup of Jonathan <coughs> Park uh, this past Saturday. Um, there were 25 participants, which included seven young adults from uh, Storm King School and three kids, 12 and under. Total debris collected was 505 pounds. Recycling collected 75 pounds, which is five large bags. Trash collected overall uh, was 430 pounds, 10 large bags, which included a laptop, uh, a one bike, scrap metal, wood, a large plastic barrel, and a huge tractor trailer. Um, also, uh, in the same vein, the Cornwall Lions picked up 25 bags of debris on NW the prior week and were assisted by the Cornwall and Hudson Scout Troop um, with the help of Storm King Engine Company, uh, who picked up the, uh, the 9W ramps. So 9W is, is pretty clean. Um, 
we encourage other highway adopters to share the successes of their cleanups. Uh, the Black Rock Fish and Game Club on Route 32, DeWitt Insurance on another stretch of 9W, Scotty's Excavation on Route 94. I've requested with the DOT uh, to contact, if they're still in existence, the Cornwall Singles. They have a stretch of uh, Route 32 from Quaker all the way to Five Corners, and uh, it hasn't been picked up in many years. So I asked them to free up that, um, that section of 32 so that another group can adopt it. Um, at the most recent uh, <coughs> formal conservation meeting, Kurt Hahn did a presentation on oil trains, <coughs> and then there were also uh, discussions on the oil pipeline and, and other uh, topics of uh, conservation. The environmental or the uh, economic development committee met with Gary Vincent to familiarize all the EDAC members uh, on zoning practices, issues, and opportunities. After following that meeting, we met with Adrian Goddard, who is the owner of Storm King Golf Club. He is a, uh, a developer of, uh, he's a contract developer of corporate properties, uh, shopping malls, uh, strip malls, things like that. So he was able to give us uh, a lot more information on what we're doing, what we're lacking, how we can attract uh, developers to the uh, Route 32, Route 9W corridors, and uh, we'll have a, a better discussion of that at the work session uh, next month. Uh, the mission and mission statement and bylaws for the EDAC have been distributed to the council, and we're waiting for edits, and look forward to discussing it in full at the next work session. The uh, the chairman and uh, the vice chairman of the EDAC, uh, Bill Brain and Nancy Croyak, and I met with James Scoofus last Friday to review funds that might be available for EDAC projects. Um, it was actually a, a very optimistic discussion. We were, we were warned of a, a nine-month process from the, from the moment we uh, request funds for a particular project. It has to go through several committees in the state legislature. It's mostly a formality, um, but um, it seems like there are funds available and we are going to present some of our ideas uh, at the next work session. Anyway, so. Councilman McGinnis. Um, the highway department for the month of April finished up final storm uh, drains and uh, damages of April. Uh, help sanitation, normal duties day to day, help sanitation yard waste, catch basin repairs town and wide, bubble pipe maintenance, several pipes down town and wide, uh, sweeper out daily, town wide roads, brush trimming and shipping uh, country, Jackson Avenue, Otter Hill Taylor Road areas, uh, blacktop patchwork town hall grounds in Little League area, work on sign up rates town wide, litter, litter patrols out town and county, uh, country rather. Uh, removal of plows and sanders from all trucks, thank God, and prep for uh, summer work, and ditching work in Beaver Dam Lake, Jackson Avenue, and Quaker Avenue areas. Uh, the building department, or like the uh, zoning. Zoning. Um, the, not zoning. Uh, the assessor's office. Assessor's office. To date, approximately 600 of the 4,900 properties in Cornwall have uh, been cataloged. And uh, our assessor has a meeting tomorrow with Tyler Tech, our subcontractor, for the uh, reassessment. And they're appointing a full-time project manager on July to start work on July 1st. Okay. Anything further? Okay. I have uh, just uh, since Peter's not here, just on Camo pollution, the uh, Cornwall plant and the Firthcliffe plant. They're doing the routine maintenance and. Uh, and upkeep, and they've indicated that uh, the uh, at both plants uh, for all of the uh, requirements that they are meeting uh, within the permit limits for both plants' uh, operations. A report from the chief for the month calls for service: 761 miles driven, 8,536. 8, uh, total miles for 2016 as of April 30th: 31,708. 
Traffic and appearance tickets, 181. Parking tickets, three. Motor vehicle accidents, 28. Arrest made, 15. Um, alarms at residents and business, 20. Ambulance requests, 12. Animal complaints, six. One burglary, two criminal mischief, nine disabled vehicles, domestic incidents, six. Parking complaints, four. Um, house checks, 12. Assisted other agencies, 21. So they've had a fairly busy month. Um, the only other thing I do want to mention is just that the uh, we, we did it last month week's meeting was the uh, the bid for the sands ring roof and painting was awarded last week uh, we're expecting that work to get started at any time um, it's it's going to be a, a major upgrade for the facility and we're still keeping our fingers crossed with the target date of having the building open by July 4th barring any unexpected uh, setbacks so we're very pleased with that I have warrant number five. Is there a motion to approve? Mm -hmm. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Roll call? Mr. McGinnis? Yes. Ms. Bond? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Randes? Yes. Motion is carried. Public comment? Any items? Yes, Carla. I wanted to thank the town um, for supporting uh, Spark Huddle's uh, bill. Um, and uh, it's wonderful to know that the town is concerned about the well-being of uh, Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Jim. Uh, Jim McGee, uh, two, two things. First of all, in regard to the comments on the econo uh, economic development and the, and the grant request, uh, certainly I would uh, I would ask that the, the town representative call Senator Larkin's office as well. It'd be great uh, to have the assembly and the Senate work together on those grants. I'm sure that that would uh, give you a higher uh, uh, chance of success. I think if both sides are working on it. So uh, I'm sure the senator's office would love to be involved in that as well. Thank you. Um, the other thing, uh, I think as we all know, the work has, has uh, started again on the pipeline on, on Route 32. Uh, I, do, I don't know if there's anything that the town can do or the coalition of towns can do to get that work stopped uh, while the lawsuits are happening. It seems very counterproductive for the village of Kirst Joel to be working on a pipeline we're hoping it's not going to stop in, in the town of Cornwall. So, I, I mean, I know we've been through this before, but right. I just don't know if there's anything that the town can do in the short term, in the short term stop that work you know while the lawsuit moves forward well the permits have been issued we are uh, obviously we're in court uh, not only for the annexation but we're also in court over the uh, the Mount, mountainville wells and all so at this point it appears that they are going to continue uh, with the uh, pipeline uh, and we'll see what when the courts rule and i don't know uh, steve if you have any expectation on when we may hear um, From well, the I, I, I can tell you that the um, lawsuit on the uh, well permit is fully submitted. We're waiting to determine if the court uh, is going to entertain oral argument or not. Um, I would anticipate at some point over the summer, uh, possibly as early as June, could be as late as August, but I would certainly anticipate in there uh, that uh, the court's going to render a decision on um, both the uh, petition and the application for uh, an injunction to prevent um, use of the well uh, during litigation. In regard to the pipeline itself, um, the town of Woodbury and the village of Woodbury previously brought a lawsuit against Curious Joel seeking to prevent having the pipeline completed and they sought both an injunction and to, to stop it all together at least until the, the issue of the water permit is out and unfortunately the courts um, you know, denied the uh, the application. So the pipeline's gonna be built. Uh, it's really not part of the ongoing litigation. And uh, that's that's where we are on that, We're waiting for a decision on the will permit, not the pipeline. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. And, and oh, on that note, in the okay. meantime, in the last uh, Tuesday's time settled record was a notice of invitation to bid for the Intermediate booster pump stations and Mountainville well supply bids are due on Friday, May 27th. Yes. Uh, Mr. Randazzo, I know in, in January you talked about um, looking at different apart, um, departments for efficiency, and, and I know we talked, um, you, the board decided in terms of the, the clerk's office and records. I haven't heard anything else about any other departments. A suggestion I would make, um, and Mr. McGinnis just correct me with the number 
owners. Was it 630 properties out of the 4,090 properties have been done? No. Approximately 600 of the 4,900 have been done. Re remain. Have been, or remain. Remain sorry. to be done. You, remain. Okay. Thank you. Remain to be done. Remain to be done. Clear. That's why I wanted to confirm yeah. that. Um, I know there's municipalities that are actually looking to, they've turned it over to the county. Is this something that Cornwall would uh, consider doing? Um, because I think of the expense that's done to do this reval, and the county would be maintaining records. I mean, the last reval was done in 1999, and it's been in, you know, there's been a large gap, and I know you hear me every month that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm assessed much higher than a lot of people on my street, and I'd just like to add something else to this. Um, speaking with other people that, that attended the bar hearing last year or the year before, another complaint they have is for water, sewage, fire, all those things that are on our tax bill, we are all being taxed per assessed value. Other mis municipalities, even the garbage, it's by unit. Why can't we do that? Because again, that's unfair. When I'm one, you know, I had a smaller, you know, people living, and across the street there's a six unit apartment thing, and there's six garbage cans going out every day, and they're paying less money than me in the garbage, you know, sewer. It's just not right. So well, I don't know, I know in other municipalities it's by unit. So why aren't we doing that? Well, we, it depends on what you're talking about. Certain certain uh, if you districts, look at the tax bill, certain districts, on, right? Certain the, the sanitation is, is based on units. For example, a single. Oh, we had the multiplier there in the. Uh, well, track. it's ba it's based on units. A single family home is ten units, uh, and generally the work it works with multiple uh, family residences. The, the first one is, is ten units, and then each of the other units is eight units on top of that. So, Just so they, it's all. The method, have the assessed value, yeah. And then the multipliers. No, that's the way. That's the way it works. You know, I assure you of that. So okay. it's based on. Um, okay, you know. there was a number of residents that had that question because they yeah. they do see that they're paying more in those fees than people with lower assessments. So. Well, it depends. It's not. Yeah, the, it's not based. Level. Yeah, the sanitation is not based on assessment. It is based on uh, okay. units. So. Well, again. I'm no, I uh, thank you. The bill, it just, it I realize like that. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, Kathy. I, I wanted to let you know, I, I believe this might be the right time to say it, is that uh, Dr. Pepper and Snapple, combined with uh, Keep America Beautiful, is offering a grant that is called Park Recycling Infrastructure Grant. And the deadline is June 10th. And I just think that we need to ask permission to apply for that grant. I'm not sure if that's true, but the Conservation Committee would like to um, submit a, a proposal for that grant. And we, we tried last year and didn't get it, so maybe this year we'd be lucky. Yeah, and I would think that, is it something that has to be signed? Do we need a resolution for the grant? Some grants require resolutions of the town board. I haven't looked at it carefully. Okay. It was just announced. Why don't you take a look at it and then send me an email with the details? I you, yeah. No, I, and I saw it, but I mean, if you if you feel it's something that you're going to do and you do need a resolution, we are meeting on the 17th that we okay. could do a resolution okay, for it. So, right, okay. Thanks. Okay, anyone else? Hearing no one, there's a motion to adjourn. For a second. second. Roll call. Mr. McGinnis? Yeah. Ms. Bunn? Yes. Mr. Summerfield? Yes. Mr. Andes? Yes. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah, I thought you did, but I sort of glossed over it. That's how I take it.